You must come forward with information of the location of this missing cargo pilot. A reward of 600 credits for the information shall be awarded. I had a contact, one of Source Rebels. But he's just gone missing. His sister will be looking for him. The temple's been destroyed, but she'll be there waiting. We'll give her your name and hope that gets us a meeting with Saul. Hope? Yeah. Rebellions are built on hope. What exactly is hope? Perhaps it's only proper to begin by observing what hope is not. For one thing, hope is not optimistic. Optimism is ultimately a gut feeling or opinion that things will turn out well in the end, but for no real reason other than, you know, they just will. They have to. On the other hand, as Terry Eagleton puts it, hope must be fallible, as temperamental cheerfulness is not. It must be able to pick out the features of a situation that render it credible. But that isn't to say that hope doesn't sometimes look sorta irrational. I'm not very optimistic about our odds. That's not okay. What makes hope a more rigorous commitment than optimism is what makes it possible. Horizon. The horizon represents a gap, an absence between you and it. You can never arrive at the horizon, only ever approach it. Hope requires and embraces this situation because in it there is potential. And we can speak about potentiality, indeed speak at all, only if there is time. A speech act, a sentence, must always unfold over some distance, some duration, across some horizon. Time in a feudal and finite system allows us to envision change. And time allows us to speak in narrative, which requires that events 1, 2, and 3 don't all happen at the same time. Narrative is a form of speech, a way of redescribing our experience of time as implotted. It also connects speech to the idea of potentiality that makes hope possible. Eagleton points out that potentiality is what articulates the present with the future and thus lays down the material infrastructure of hope. Indeed, it is because there is, strictly speaking, no present, because every present is radically in excess of itself, apprehended in the act of retaining a trace of the past while passing instantaneously over into a future, that hope is conceivable. But are there cases where there is no potential, no hope? 2016's Rogue One A Star Wars Story is a kind of meditation on hope, particularly when faced with the seemingly hopeless limit situation we would call tragedy. Rogue One's last act begins with an invocation of hope. Armed with little more than the oral report that her father, a conscience-stricken Imperial architect, has secretly built a hidden weakness into the lately active Death Star battle station, the protagonist Jin Erso makes the case for hope. This comes as she tries to persuade the fledgling Rebel Alliance into an all-out attack on the planet Scarif, occupied by the Galactic Empire, in order to steal the Death Star plans. You're asking us to invade an Imperial installation based on nothing but hope. Rebellions are built on hope. There is no hope. I say we fight! I say the Rebellion is finished! Despite the denial, Jin and her ragtag comrades decide to attempt the mission themselves, later drawing in the rest of the Alliance fleet as a result. But things certainly do seem hopeless before long. As the uphill battle goes on, it becomes increasingly clear that there will be no way out for the Rogue One team, as each one is cornered and killed until only Jin and her friend Cassian Andor are left. Is it possible to hope when faced with what we might call a hopeless situation? Can hope exist in the face of annihilation, a literal or symbolic bringing to nothing? Eagleton looks at this question through the lens of philosopher Jonathan Lear's concept of radical hope, which arises when circumstances transcend the ability to understand them. Only after the cataclysm will the concepts be available to speak the tragedy and to recover. Thus, Eagleton writes, the most authentic kind of hope is whatever can be salvaged, stripped of guarantees from a general dissolution, it represents an irreducible residue that refuses to give way, plucking its resilience from an openness to the possibility of unmitigated disaster. In order to hope, you have to be open to potential, but we can only talk of potential if things can turn out either way. Hope accepts that. Sure, there are cases of tragedy that leave absolutely nothing behind to console or regenerate, but even still, 
Eagleton says, there could be no tragedy in the first place without a sense of value. We would not call tragic the destruction of something we did not prize. But acting in hope isn't just about outcomes. Sometimes hope enables or demands action for its own sake. Unlike optimism, quote, hope can acknowledge loss or destruction to be unavoidable, yet still refuse to capitulate. What drives the team is neither optimism about its chances of success, nor pessimism about the odds of defeat, which are really the same thing. Rather, it's a hope that begins with the worth of the action it takes. The possibility, rather than the probability, of success. Because hope can result in taking action in spite of Cataclysm, and thus transcend it, Rogue One's Annihilation coincides with the narrative pivot point by which hope is able to bring something out of nothing. What is that something? Speech. You can't have hope if you can't speak it. Eagleton observes, hope would stumble to a halt only when we could no longer identify cruelty and injustice for what they were. To speak of hopelessness must logically presuppose the idea of hope. It is when meaning as such collapses that tragedy is no longer possible. Rogue One's actions find their hope in the possibility of naming and speaking tragedy, in other words, of bearing witness. Not only does Jin and company hope that the Death Star plans will prevent untold deaths to come, but also that it is still possible to communicate the injustices of the Empire, and to be understood, without which even successfully transmitting the plans would be pointless. If authentic hope is that which survives the general ruin of catastrophe, then yeah, there is hope, even in Rogue One's tragic end. To speak a cataclysm, Eagleton says, there must be something that survives it, a scrap of paper, a messenger. I think this means that the irreducible residue of hope is the capacity to speak, to signify. Rogue One's transmission contains Death Star plans, yes, but it's also significant as a speech act, a message, a bridge between past cataclysm and future change, which the soldiers and finally Princess Leia literally carry bringing a new, or perhaps returning to a more basic meaning of the phrase, bearing witness. Death for Jin, Cassian, and the others may well be the end of narrativity, the non-event which swallows up possibility, but their last act, their speech act, their witness, serves as an event whose transmittal keeps constituting the past and the future into an ongoing narrative. This signifying event is what makes a new hope possible. Hope constitutes the not yet, and through speaking possibility, perhaps creates possibility. As long as calamity can be given a voice, it ceases to be the final word, Eagleton says. It's true that language may not repair one's condition simply by talking about it, naming it, understanding it, but on the other hand, there's no hope of affecting it without doing so. Interpreting the world, which requires language, is an essential precondition to affecting it. And after all, what more basic potentiality is there than the potential created by a language, by which one transmits signs in the hope that they can and will be understood? You think anybody's listening? I do. Someone's out there. Rogue One is about struggle and survival, camaraderie, and finding solidarity when every urge is to suspect one another. But all of these things must begin with accepting and pursuing the potential that comes from the radical unknowability of time and choice. In the face of tragedy, where words seem to fail, hope constitutes the possibility of event by bearing witness. And that's something I hope we all can find the strength to do. Thanks so much for watching. Steve Baxi and I, a while back, came up with the idea of doing parallel videos about the topic of hope in Rogue One. You can click the link on the left here to go watch Steve's video, which introduces philosopher Hannah Arendt's theory of human natality, labor, work, and action to think through the film's themes of hope and speech. Definitely check it out.